His Excellency Mr. Martin Klus, State Secretary of the Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs of the Slovak Republic, who is on his official visit to Indonesia. Good afternoon and welcome to Jakarta, Your Excellency. Good afternoon. I'm very pleased to be here. How are you? Fine, thank you, Will. Oh, always happy to be with the nice people in beautiful country. Oh, all right. And um, have you been to Jakarta before? No, it's my first time in Indonesia. So really looking forward for this visit. How's Jakarta treating you so far? It's a beautiful place. Uh, quite busy in this moment, I have to say, especially if it comes to the traffic. But uh, yeah. we are getting used to it also in uh, my capital. So, yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you for joining me to discuss Indonesia's G20 presidency and other related issues and um, perhaps we can start with a question on the purpose of your visit mm -hmm. to Indonesia and what is the expectations as you will be meeting your counterpart and other official uh, governments or institutions in, in Indonesia. Well, expectations are always very high and I'm very much looking forward for this uh, meeting because uh, we had uh, or still have a very good relationship uh, with uh, the embassy of Indonesia in Bratislava and uh, I have to say that uh, also because of this fact uh, especially these people to people contacts are uh, becoming more and more fruitful mm -hmm. uh, some students are coming from Indonesia to Bratislava and vice versa as well and uh, uh, of course, uh, a very important part of our discussion will be economic relationship, uh, not only if it comes to Slovakia and Indonesia, but also European Union and South uh, Asian uh, countries. And uh, I'm sure that there, there are some rooms to improve, and I'm sure that uh, we can help each other also bilateral way. Uh, and uh, of course, a very important part of our discussion will be security, because this is becoming uh, very concrete problem in our region uh, with uh, Ukrainian uh, Russian war and uh, of course uh, we are very concerned what is happening here if it comes to the contested territories or uh, maritime zones issues uh, so this is a very important topic for us and uh, I hope uh, we'll find some way how to help each other especially international organization and uh, last but not least uh, uh, I guess this is the right time to speak about the common values uh, because uh, we believe in peace, we believe in democracy, we believe in multilateralism. For both of our countries, this is very important. Mm -hmm. Who will you be meeting uh, tomorrow? I will meet uh, with uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Deputy Prime Minister, uh, sorry, Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, and uh, I will meet also uh, my colleagues in the Parliament right. because I'm former parliamentarian, so Correct. it will be fantastic uh, to, to uh, visit them and to speak also. Uh, how parliamentarians are uh, uh, following the situation and uh, what's their concerns and uh, points of view. Right, okay. Uh, well, you mentioned some of it earlier, but could you please brief us the state of bilateral relations between uh, Slovakia and Indonesia and what are the potential areas of cooperation that will be explored? Mm -hmm. Well, as long as there are no open issues, uh, Many countries believe uh, we don't necessarily need to contact each other, uh, uh, maybe more and more, but uh, I'm, I'm completely different opinion because if there are no open issues, there is perfect uh, starting point for, uh, for other uh, very concrete cooperation. And of course, we are having some suggestion, for instance, if it comes to the uh, security industry and the defense industry. Uh, Slovakia uh, is well known for its uh, Czechoslovak uh, defense uh, history. And uh, not only, uh, we are trying to work hard uh, on uh, uh, cyber uh, issues and a uh, very important part of our, uh, our economic uh, our diplomacy is now uh, to promote uh, green transition. So let's speak about new technologies which could help uh, both Indonesia and Slovakia to bring our countries to the real 21st century. Right, okay. And what's the progress on the uh, defense cooperation? I heard that there will be a signing, uh, MOU signing. Yes, uh, my colleagues around the Ministry of Defense mm -hmm. uh, visited Indonesia just recently and uh, as far as I know they are on the good track to, to finalize uh, the document and uh, mm -hmm. also as far as I know uh, uh, there are some very concrete uh, uh, proposals for cooperation uh, mm -hmm. if it comes to the uh, private uh, uh, sector and uh, uh, hopefully there will be some also joint uh, uh, ventures uh, which will promote uh, Slovak and Indonesian uh, defense and security industry. I see, okay. Any specific areas will be covered? 
under the MOU? Uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure about the details yet, yeah. as long as it's Ministry of Defense. Right. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, we will clear up also um, this uh, this topic uh, tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, not only because uh, there are some companies already which are seeking for uh, this uh, great market, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, it will be win-win situation if uh, they will uh, promote their activities also in Indonesia. As I already mentioned, it's especially cybersecurity. Right. Uh, which is very critical topic also for Slovakia now, mm -hmm. and not only uh, this green transition and some new technologies in uh, 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 green uh, industry is uh, also very uh, important part of our discussion for tomorrow. Okay, yeah. Excellency, moving on to another topic. During Indonesia's G20 presidency, three main issues that will be covered are global health architecture, mm -hmm. digital and economic transformation, and energy transition. And as Slovakia is part of the EU, how's the commitment of the bloc to, to help developing countries in the transition energy and in reducing carbon emissions? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, frankly, uh, mm -hmm. one of the main reasons uh, why I'm visiting uh, Indonesia these days is that uh, Indonesia is a presidential country of G20. Uh, Slovakia will be presidential country of so-called Visegrad cooperation and Slavko cooperation as from 1st of July, which is regional cooperation within the European Union. And our uh, friends and colleagues in Czech Republic will be presidential country of European Union Council. Uh, so that's why it is very important for us to uh, cover some topics uh, we are having in common. And uh, you mentioned a couple of them, which are also the priorities of the G20 Indonesian presidency. And uh, uh, as long as European Union is now promoting uh, this uh, digital transition and also uh, energy security in uh, uh, the highest priority. Uh, I'm sure this will be also the topic for discussion tomorrow mm -hmm. at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and at, at the Parliament uh, because uh, European uh, Union uh, uh, in 2020 decides to offer uh, membership countries uh, uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, millions of euro uh, for such a transition. So now it's very important to think uh, what should be the most efficient way how to invest this money and if possible, uh, this should be not only European, but also global uh, goal we have to reach together. So I'm very happy that Indonesian presidency in G20 is dealing with this topic. Uh, but uh, it's not only about this topic. So I believe uh, we have to speak about the values in G20 as well. And frankly, um, we are following very closely what sh should be the uh, future of Russia in G20 after what has happened in in Ukraine and uh, we are of course uh, trying to promote our point of view. Mm -hmm. uh, what should be done in G20 with the membership of Russia as a country which is violating international law? Right. And um, still on sustainable energy issue, what are the best practices in what are the best practices in the sustainable energy and digital technology programs that Indonesia can learn from Slovakia in particular and uh, from the EU in general? Yeah. Well, we are now trying to promote uh, new programs also uh, in cooperation with our universities. Uh, so digital transition is uh, inevitable, of course, uh, uh, to cover world society. Uh, and uh, we believe that uh, our universities, which are having tradition uh, in digital services, uh, should be a good partner. And uh, of course, I'm here to, to promote some of these universities here in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So I hope uh, some uh, young people from Indonesia should uh, visit Slovakia for uh, short or long-term uh, studies and uh, some research as well. Uh, except of that, uh, I guess uh, we are a quite successful country if it comes to uh, new technologies, so, uh, if it comes to the selection of waste. Uh, right. uh, for instance, plastic is a huge problem, not only in Asia, but also in Europe. And uh, I'm very happy that uh, this uh, kind of the processes are now on uh, one of the highest level in my country. So it's about the uh, good practices, it's about uh, possibilities to share our experiences. And I'm sure that uh, some of our companies uh, which are working hard on this topic uh, should be very active also in this part of the world. And Excellency, perhaps it's, um, it's a tough time for Indonesia as the chair of G20 this year, while the world is still struggling in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic, and countries are shocked by mm. the uh, Russia-Ukraine war. 
So, and Russian authorities were accused of uh, war crimes in violation of international law. So we just want to know what's the stance of your country and as part of the EU and the NATO, what has been done and will be done to maintain mm -hmm. peace and security globally? Well, first and foremost, I have to say that uh, it's a really tragical situation for us to follow what is happening in our neighbor country. Uh, Ukrainians are uh, very close friends to us uh, with a similar culture and a similar language. So for us, it's even more sensitive. And to follow uh, 360,000 people who already arrived uh, from Ukraine to Slovakia, and uh, 70,000 of them already asked for asylum or so-called temporary shelter, is, is really tragical uh, to follow, especially uh, women and, and kids and elder people uh, with a lot of tragic stories. Uh, so. This is something what is, uh, of course, uh, changing our society too. And I'm very proud to say that uh, uh, we already show quite a lot of solidarity. And uh, I'm very proud of our citizens that they are helping uh, voluntarily to, to these people. And, uh, and uh, all of us are heavily affected. And even worse, we are heavily affected the uh, economic way because uh, uh, interdependency uh, of European countries on Russian gas and oil or nuclear fuel, coal, or iron is, is uh, quite high, including my own country. So um, it's a very, very sensitive issue we are dealing with at the European level. As you probably know, European Union already introduced uh, five uh, packages of sanctions. I read to call them uh, special economic operations, uh, because this is what uh, Mr. Putin should understand better. And uh, uh, of course, we are not happy for that because they are affecting also us and our citizens. And we understand that it is affecting also regular Russian citizens. But uh, as long as Russia is a nuclear superpower, there is only way uh, how to uh, push them to change their behaviors this way. And uh, we can't use uh, military solutions in this topic. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, we are ready to cooperate uh, also with Indonesia and some other countries in this region at the United Nations level and discuss how we can change uh, maybe some policies there as long as United Nations in this particular topic uh, can serve as a peacemaker. Right. So the, the Slovak Republic also provided humanitarian assistance to yes, so Ukrainians? Yes, yeah. oh. quite, so quite a lot of uh, uh, humanitarian assistance has been provided already, but not only we are providing also military uh, assistance to Ukrainian army. Such as? Uh, well, well, we started with uh, uh, small equipment, uh, defense equipment, but now the situation has changed and uh, discussing possibilities also with uh, other kind, kind of uh, equipment uh, together with our EU partners and US uh, partners within the NATO. Yeah. Right, okay. Your Excellency, what do you hope to see in Indonesia's G20 presidency in terms of concrete actions in the economic sector and the acceleration of sustainable energy? Of course, uh, uh, Indonesian presidency in G20 uh, should help us uh, to promote uh, universal values uh, of uh, global trade, uh, human rights, and, and, uh, uh, and many other uh, important topics uh, for uh, both of our countries, like multilateralism and uh, uh, international organization uh, rules, uh, which we all believe uh, should bring uh, uh, prosperity to, to the world. Uh, so we are very much keeping our fingers crossed to, to uh, Indonesian presidency and we are ready to, to help as much as it gets. All right. Before I conclude this, is there anything that you would like to add? So I understand how uh, tough situation it was uh, for Indonesia, but also for us in European Union. And uh, uh, if there is any chance uh, to, to, to use our experiences, to share our experiences, uh, not to allow such a situation in the future. And uh, last but not least, I'm very happy that the uh, European Union and Slovakia uh, were helpful if it comes to the vaccination campaigns all around the world. Uh, so if G20 with Indonesia as a presidential country should help us also in, in this topic, uh, because we believe if uh, not everybody is safe, nobody is safe, uh, then uh, uh, it will be even more uh, fruitful presidency of Indonesia in G20 and Slovakia and uh, some other countries in the European Union helping with the COVAX. All right. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Once again, thank you so much for giving us the interview and thank you for your valuable views. 
and uh, I hope all your programs will run smoothly I while you're so in Indonesia. <laughs> yeah, and have a great one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for invitation. Thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure too. <laughs>